In this one, I want to show how you can create the impression that you've just taken one section of the landscape. I've just painted here a little example of the towpath at the side of this canal. I'm going to mix some shadow colour. Very important when you're mixing shadow colours that you do get it strong enough to have some impact, but thin enough to appear transparent. It's got to look as though you can actually see the path underneath these warm shadows. So I'm taking some cobalt blue and I'm making that into a sort of purple colour with a little bit of rose madder. I want to try and create the effect of dappled shadow from all this foliage. And remember, a lot of this foliage isn't actually in the scene. It's off to the right hand side, but it still is affecting this scene by the shadows that it's casting across the path. So I'm starting with a smaller brush. This is a number four to make the shadow marks, the dappled marks from the shadow a little bit smaller the further away from as they are. So I'm starting up the path here and bringing some quite strong shadows across the path with that broken dappled shape. A lot of people say to me that they, they're afraid to do the shadows because they've spoilt paintings that many times. And a key to it is not to scrub away with the brush, to paint them quite quickly and loosely, leaving a few gaps between them to get that dappled effect. Now I'm going now to a, a bigger brush. I've got a number eight brush so that the shadow marks become a bit larger and I'm adding a bit more rose madder to it because I want to up the color temperature. Warm colors come forward and cool colors recede. So if we can get nice warm color in the foreground by using these shadows, it'll help to really plant it down at the very front of the picture. And now I'm using broader strokes with the bigger brush, but still getting a sort of dappled, shape with them. And when we get to this point here, they're stretching right across the path. I can paint them right across it, but still use the tip of the brush to get that sort of dappled effect. And reinforcing the warmer colour at the very front of the path is the fact that underneath this purple shadow colour is that burnt sienna. The colour underneath it is slightly warmer as well. And we'll leave that to dry before we just put a few perspective lines in to finish it off. I'm just getting a bit more of the shadow colour, this cobalt blue and rose madder, and a detailer brush, a number two, and just using one or two of the sort of cracks in the paving stones to give us some perspective. Good idea to break them up a bit or they can look a bit too much like uh, tram lines. They can look a bit obvious. So if I take a line from the foreground like that, I do a little bit of stopping and starting. One or two of these lines are helped by putting a, a cross piece in. And they do converge. You need to make sure that you get them converging so that it does emphasize that all important perspective. I've got a little bit of brown here made from burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And just so that I can strengthen the line nearest to us, I'm putting a touch of that into it. And then still with that dark brown mixture, the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, I'm looking for one or two areas where when I put the shadow in, I missed a few bits. You get that by brushing very quickly across rough paper and areas like this where I've maybe missed a bit with a little bit of dark underneath and running towards the left of it. You can make that almost look like a, a dead leaf or a bit of, or a stone or something laying in the path so that you've got a little bit more detail nearest to where the viewer is stood and it just helps to plant the foreground down. Doing this is fun and you have to make sure that you don't get carried away and overdo it. I think that's plenty. And here you can see this effect in the context of the finished picture. In this scene we're going to be looking at autumn again, but this time a little bit earlier in the season when there's still a bit more green in the foliage. I'm going to show you here how you can combine dry brushwork and the wet into wet technique in the same painting. I've started by laying in a sky wash, a little bit of cobalt blue. So I'm going to start with a number 10 brush. I, I think this is about the right size, anything bigger, and you can tend to overwhelm the paper with the foliage and not leave enough gaps to glimpse the sky. And I'm going to start with that sort of orangey shade. This is the Oriolin and Burnt Sienna and just try to get that hit and miss effect in the foliage. It can be quite dense in parts, so you can put a bit more pressure on at first, but then lessen the pressure as the brush runs low on paint, so you get very much uh, a broken hit and miss effect. I'm gonna wash the brush and go straight into the bright green. This is the 
aurelin and cobalt blue. And you can see what happens now. Where we meet the dry paper, you get the dry brush broken effect. Where it meets the orange colour, which still hasn't dried, it softens into it. So you get that best of both. And that's where timing's important because you need to have each colour ready before the previous one has dried. Let's try a little bit of this lemon yellow as well. Let that blend in. Because you do get some nice bright yellows in autumn as well as the reds and golds. I'm now going to take that orange colour again but add a bit more burnt sienna this time so it's a little bit redder. I'm taking some of the paint off the brush so it doesn't flood it and I'm going to just add a touch of that in and you can see how we get in that that blending effect where, the, where wet paint meets wet paint but a scumbled effect where it skids across the dry paper. Now you need to be ready straight away with a number four brush and the dark brown, the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue so you can start putting the trunk and branches in while the paint is still wet because they, what, we're, what we're trying to achieve here is a now you see it now you don't because where the branch meets the wet paint it softens and blends into it almost disappears into it where it meets the dry paper you get a definite edge and sometimes you want to create a bit more of the branch like for instance this area here so you can paint a bit more into the wet paint breaking the line up So there is a final effect, which is a bit more dry brushwork with some lemon yellow, but it does need some time to dry before that. Well, now that it's dry, just a few finishing touches with a number four brush and some lemon yellow. And I'm going to take advantage of the fact that lemon yellow is opaque. Not if you dilute it though. So I'm going to take neat paint. This is straight out of the tube and onto the brush. Using the brush again with my thumb at one side of the handle and four fingers at the other. So I'll lay the flat on the paper, take that across, mainly looking for darker areas, like against the trunk and branches. Okay, I think that's enough. And here you can see this effect in the context of the finished picture. In this one, we're going to be looking at how you can create the effect of fine twigs and branches that are a lot lighter than the background. It may be that they are just a lighter colour than the background, or it may be that they've got a touch of snow or frost on them. Timing is crucial in this one. So I've got some paint mixed and ready. I've got a, a nice rich dark mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. So I'm going to paint an area here to give the impression of perhaps a little bit of uneven ground an old hedgerow, something like that. And I've started with the really rich dark brown. I need to get some fairly strong colouring so I've got something to contrast with the scratched out lines. And then I'm going to get a bit smaller brush and I've got a much brighter mixture, a bit of red. This is raw sienna and rose madder. I'm going to put a little bit of that in as well. And then I'm going to take a craft knife. It's got a really good point to it. Now the timing is crucial here. If I scratch these out too early, the paint will just run back in again. If I leave it too late when the paint's dried, then it won't scratch out. I'll just take lumps out of the paper. So what I need to do is just wait a moment. The, the ideal timing is just as it's started to dry, just as it's losing its shine. A good tip is to look at it sideways. You can see the shine on the paper. That should be right about now, so let's just give it a try. Now you can vary the width of these lines, especially if you've got a, a knife like this with a good point to it, because if I use the very point of the knife, you can see I get a really fine line. If I lay the knife with a bit more of the flat of the blade against the paper, we get a broader line like that, and we can take that up right out of this area. And of course, you can vary the width enormously but just by how flat you put the knife to the paper or how much of the point you use and it quite easily just removes the paint leaving as a very fine line of white paper 
underneath. And then you can enhance that. Say, for instance, this was a winter scene and this bush had the sky behind it or a bit of snow-covered land behind it. What we need to employ here is light against dark, which we've already done. And when it comes into a lighter area, I'm going to go dark against light. So I've got a very fine brush and I'm going to carry on now where I left off with this dark brown. I'm going to brush that in so it seems to go seamlessly from the light to the dark. Here's another example of it here. We can just carry that on and then blend it in to the previous colour down there. Get these little twigs really fine. Again here we've got an example of where we come right to the top of the dark area with the scratched out branch and I can take over from there with the dark colour. And you can repeat that all through this. Now you don't have to do it this way, but if they're going to come out above the darker background, you've got to think, how are you going to make them stand out? Okay, so that's completed. And here you can see this effect in the context of the finished picture. So that brings us to the end of the programme. I hope you'll join me next time for some more tips and techniques, but in the meantime, happy painting. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.